Operating Room Nurse and welcome to this Operating Room Educational Video. Today we're going to talk about pneumatic tourniquet, just like these two besides me, and of course how to apply one in our patient. In our facility we have the Zimmer ATS 2000 and the 3000. For the purpose of this video, we're going to talk about the ATS 3000, how to use it, and its physical features. Without any more further ado, let's jump into it. Let's start at the back of the unit. You see there your AC power plug. Next up is your IB pole mounting screw, some details of the unit, and your power ground. Now let's turn the unit to the front. On top your carrying handle for easy transport. It includes pull-out hose hangers on both sides for storage. On your right hand side is where the alarm shut off button and below that is the on and off button. The pressure setting on the right is for the blue cuff and the control buttons for the red cuff is at the left side. This machine can support dual bladder cuff for your beer's block or dual surgical site application. Each side has a dedicated time, pressure, and LOP buttons, AC indicator light, and battery indicator light. Under that is the deflate inflate selector. Below these controls are the unit pull out information guides. By pressing the on standby button for 2 seconds, Turns the unit on or set the unit to standby. Once it turns on the unit, it will do its self test on its hardware and software at the same time calibrating the whole unit. Pressing and holding a pressure button more than 2 seconds allows you to verify and change the default pressure on the display. The shuttle knob can then be used to change the default pressure desired. For you to check and change the default time on the display, do the same step that you did on the default pressure. To set the desired pressure and activate the shuttle knob, first press the pressure button then turn the shuttle knob. Repeat the same procedure to modify the required time needed. On this part of the video, we are going to talk about documentation. Let's go to the computer, look for interrupt tourniquet, then enter the machine name. Next is the uh, serial number or the designated unit number by the hospital or biomed the cuff size that you are using then hit next type the pressure setting choose the site where you apply the cuff choose the skin condition before you apply the cuff and then who apply the cuff then click next next up set the time you started inflating the tourniquet and the time it was deflated Next, the skin condition after the, you remove the cuff and choose who remove the cuff. Then click next. Now your assessment to the distal pulse. Then hit the next again button. This part is your assessment for your temperature of the skin. And at the bottom you can document anything that you observed that has to be hand over regarding tonic use. Then finally hit add. On the table are the required materials for the application of tonic cuff. The tourniquet size should be half of the limb diameter and the length of the cuff should have at least 3 inches but not more than 6 inches bladder overlap on the limb. At the same time, inspect the O-rings for cracks, leaks and other damage. If the tourniquet site is close to the surgical incision, it is recommended to use a sterile single-use cuff instead. A appropriate size and length of the second net for the skin protection should always be handy. Next requirement is soft padding should be ready if the limb is conical shape 
or if you don't have the appropriate stuck in its size. Another thing is to have a plastic barrier near if the surgical site is near to the tourniquet to prevent soiling and fluid accumulation under the cuff. And last, have a rubber or elastic s mark bandage should be available for exsanguination of the limb. So let's now apply tourniquet to our patient. First, select an appropriate size and length of stockinette. At the same time, inspect the skin integrity of the patient where you're going to put the tourniquet. Roll the stockinette and slide it down to the arm of the patient. The padding should be wrinkle free and not pinch the skin. If you don't have the appropriate size of stockinette, a low lint wool soft padding should be applied around the limb. Now let's apply the appropriately sized bladder cuff on the arm of the patient. The cuff should overlap at least 3 inches but not more than 6 inches. Too much overlap causes rolling or wrinkling of underlying soft tissue. This increases the pressure to the areas of overlap. Make sure the velcro straps are effectively fastened and both ties are knotted together. The cuff tubing should be positioned on or near lateral aspect of the extremity to prevent kinking of the tubing. Once you secure the laces, you can pull the remaining stockinette up and cover the bladder cuff. This will protect the skin of the patient from direct contact from the bladder cuff. So once you have done that, you are now ready to connect the hose to the port of the bladder cuff. If the skin incision is proximal to the tunicate cuff, the patient's skin should be protected from fluid accumulation under the cuff. Irrigation and skin prep solution can harbor moisture, resulting to skin breakdown and chemical burn. Lacy wool cuffs should be protected too from contamination by blood, fluid, and potential infectious material. For you to do this, wrap around a plastic barrier around the tourniquet cuff. Now finally, the patient is now ready for prepping and draping. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next educational video.